Welcome back. In the previous lecture, we had looked at the options available in terms of the fuel in a nuclear fission reactor. In this lecture, we will take up this important topic of neutron multiplication factor in a fission reactor. This is very important for sustaining nuclear fission. In a nuclear reactor, besides the fuel, there are many other components which determine the rate of the reaction, whether the reaction is sustainable, whether the reaction will increase or decrease. We will go into the role of other components uh, in this series, but we will take up a particular aspect in of neutron multiplication. By that, what we mean is that uh, the most important factor that determine the rate of reaction is the amount of neutron available in the system uh, and, of course, the fuel. So the amount of neutron available depends upon a variety of factors. We will try to deconvolute these factors in this lecture. Here, we show data for different fuels. So three different fuels are uh, shown here. This is the most important fuel. This is also becoming more important. Uh, this is also an important fuel, but not so readily available. Um, what we plot here is along the x-axis, we plot the neutron energy along the y-axis, uh, we plot the number of neutrons released per absorbed neutron. When a fissile nucleus takes up one neutron, it releases more neutron than it consumes. So this is very critical for sustaining a chain reaction. As you can see, um, let's say uh, when we are in thermal neutral uh, neutron regime, all the three fuel produce uh, more than the neutrons they consume. In some uh, regime, it is close to, for example, in this energy, uh, the number of neutrons generated decreases. Uh, but overall, we would like to be in a regime where we are generating more neutrons than what we are consuming. Not all neutrons are the same, and not all fissile uh, or all nuclei are the same. So an important feature of U-235 is shown in this plot. Along the y-axis, we are plotting the fission cross-section. Along the x-axis, we are plotting uh, the neutron energies. We have elaborated this in the previous lecture, so we'll quickly uh, go over this. The main point here is um, U-235 has much greater cross-section, especially when we are using uh, thermal neutrons. But we'll uh, appeal to this plot often in this lecture. So the first factor is called the enhancement factor. So there are issues with uh, uh, notations. Um, let's just clarify that. So here, V refers to number of neutrons produced in fission. Uh, we had used a different notation in the previous slide, but uh, I'm just being consistent with this book. So this is usually more than one. So we are having we are generating more neutrons than what we consume. But all neutrons that are present do not just go into fission. It can also be captured by U-235 without initiating fission. So sigma C refers to cross-section for capture of neutron without initiating uh, fission. And this just results in the formation of U-236. And there's no fission involved. 
So this is not advantageous uh, for sustaining chain reaction. We define an enhancement factor in the following manner. Neutrons of all energies generated by fission divided by thermal neutrons produced by fission. Why is this important? If you have high energy neutrons, this increases the cross section for fission in U238. What we are referring to is this Richie. When you have high energy neutron, although U238 is not a fissile material in this energy regime, at high energies, U238 uh, cross section towards fission increases. So it's beneficial to have neutron in this regime so that it can activate U238 also. So taking into account this factor, we define this factor as an enhancement factor. This is advantageous to uh, multiply eta with, uh, I mean, epsilon with eta. Then the next factor is called gives you a uh, estimate of uh, high energy neutrons um, when they are slowed down by the moderator how much high of these are available as thermal neutrons so let's look at um, this factor uh, in terms of this plot when a moderator is being used what its essential role is to decrease the kinetic energy of high energy neutrons and bring it to thermalization. Okay, so bring it to this energy regime. While it does so, uh, there is an in-between regime where the neutron can be absorbed by resonance. There are many resonance states uh, wherein it may get absorbed um, so that is not very advantageous and you're losing some of uh, the um, neutrons by resonance absorption. So you, the probability to escape this resonance states is given by this factor. So you, if you escape resonance states, that's going to be advantageous. When P is greater, you get more of thermalized neutrons. So that also adds uh, to our uh, neutron bucket that is available towards uh, fission. So the last factor is called the absorption factor. Um, what is What does it do? So F factor is the thermal neutron absorbed by U235, that's going to be advantageous, divided by the thermal neutrons absorbed by all other processes. Why is this important? Because besides the fuel, this is the fuel, there are so many other components in the reactor. Uh, that is the control rod, that is the moderator, that is the structural materials that go into making the reactor. All these uh, can absorb neutron because neutron is neutral the, and it can easily uh, penetrate into all these components. So what is going to be useful towards fission are the thermal neutrons absorbed by U235 because uh, in this regime, the fission cross-section is um, significant for U235. So this is also important. You want to be increasing F. So when you put all these things together, you compute what is called the multiplication factor in a chain reaction. That is given by K infinity, wherein you have multiplied eta, epsilon, probability factor to escape resonance, and absorption factor defined in the following manner. Why do you have um, K infinity? This is because some of 
these neutrons can escape. So uh, the, the probability of no leak is given by this. The greater this probability, it is beneficial uh, for you. Uh, if P is 1, you define that factor as K infinity. That is the multiplication factor, assuming probability of no leak to be 1. But it's usually there is some leakage. So this capital P is less than 1. So this is the effective multiplication factor in a chain reaction. To sustain a chain reaction, you want this number to be greater than 1. Um, because if it is less than 1, you are consuming more neutron than what you are generating. Therefore, you cannot sustain a chain reaction. So this is a very important factor that has to be uh, modulated to control uh, the rate of the reaction in a, a nuclear fission reactor. In the next lecture, we will use this factor to understand the dynamics of a new nuclear fission reactor. Thank you.